Hello and welcome to the introduction for this course. What are the course requirements? You need a computer and internet connection to follow along with this course. Who is this course for? This course is for anyone who wants to learn something new. What is the course format? The format of the course is video. Hello and welcome to this video. In this video, I'm going to download and install Azure Data Studio. What is Azure Data Studio? Azure Data Studio is a cross-platform database tool for data professionals using on-premises and cloud data platforms on a Windows platform, Mac OS platform, and a Linux-based platform. Azure Data Studio offers a modern editor experience with IntelliSense, code snippets, source control integration, and an integrated terminal. Azure Data Studio can be used to query, to design and manage your databases and data warehouses wherever they are, either on your local computer or in the cloud. The link to download Azure Data Studio is displayed on the screen. This is the web page that contains the link to download Azure Data Studio. So I'm going to scroll down to where the link is. You can see where it's got download Azure Data Studio. And there are different installation methods. And the recommended one is the user installer. The reason the user installer is recommended is because it does not require administrator privileges, which basically simplifies the installation and upgrade process. I'm using a Windows computer, so I'm going to be going for the Windows download. So I'll click on the link here for user installer. I'm going to double click on the installer from the download, which is this file here. So I'll double click. When you run the Azure Data Studio setup file, this is what comes up. Just click to accept the license agreement, click next. Just accept the default settings, click next. And then if you want to create a desktop icon, you can check that and that will add an icon to the desktop, click next. Click on the install button. The installation of the Azure Data Studio is complete. If you want to launch it straight away, you can leave the check here. I don't want to launch it now, so I'm going to uncheck that and click finish. And that is the icon it has placed on my desktop. If you are on a Mac OS or Linux based computer, you can follow the installation instructions on this page. So that's the instructions for the Mac OS install. And this is the installation for the Linux based install. In this video, I downloaded and installed Azure Data Studio. Thanks for watching. Hello and welcome to this video. What is SQL Server? SQL Server is a relational database management system developed by Microsoft. As a database server, it is a software product with the primary function of storing and retrieving data as requested by other software applications which may either run on the same computer or on another computer across a network or the internet. SQL Server exclusively used to only run on a Windows based environment but for the past few years, Microsoft has made it also available to run on a Linux based environment. The current version of SQL Server, as of the time I'm recording this video, is SQL Server 2019. In most production environments, SQL Server will be installed normally on a dedicated machine and then users would log into that machine remotely from their own computer to access the databases that 
they want to use. You can also install SQL Server locally on your own computer. SQL Server can be used for different purposes apart from as a database server. Every server installation of SQL is referred to as an instance. So a single instance is a single installation of SQL Server, which can hold many individual databases. In order to interact and communicate with the data stored in relational database management system, there is a special language called structural query language, which is used to interact with most relational database management system. Microsoft SQL Server has its own implementation of the SQL language, which is called Transact SQL, which is also referred to as T-SQL for short. In this video, I gave you a brief introduction to what SQL Server is. Thank you for watching. Bye for now. Hello and welcome to this video. This is the official website for SQL Server 2019 download. So there are some options here to try SQL Server on premises or in the cloud. So if you want to try it on premises, this is the trial version. If you want to try it in the cloud, then you have the option to go to Azure. But what we want, we want the developer edition, which is free. There's also an option to download the Express if you wish to do so. Also, if you want to install SQL Server 2019 on Windows, Linux, or Docker containers, it tells you the way to do that here. But we are going for the developer edition. So I'm going to click on this button link to download the setup file for the developer edition. So I'll click on that and that should start downloading. You can see here started downloading the files for the developer setup. This should not take too long. So I just give it a few minutes to complete. The download has completed. This is just a partial download. I'm just going to click on this to go to the download location. So I'll click show in folder. And this takes me to my folder where it was downloaded to. So this is what the file looks like. It says SQL 2019-SSE1-Dev. You can see the size is not that much. This is just a partial installation. You still have to run this file to download the full installation files. When you download the installation files, it will prompt you for a default location. So I'm going to create a folder here where it's going to download the other components of the SQL Server installation. So I'm going to right click here in my downloads folder, go new, and I'm just going to click on folder. I'm just going to give it a name. I'm going to call it SQL Server Download. So I've created this folder here inside my download file called SQL Server 2019 Download. So now that I have that folder created, I want to run this file that I initially downloaded. So I'll double click to run and that will start up the setup files for the installation. So you can see here, it gives you three options. You have the basic, the custom and download media. Download media basically enables you to download the files so that you can later just run it from your computer or any computer you want to run the installation from. I'm going to go for the download media so that I have the option to install it later. It tells me to select the language. I'm going to accept the default package. So you have two options of packages you would like to download, either the ISO or the CAB. So I'm going to leave the default, which is the ISO. I'm going to browse to my downloads folder and just select the folder I created to download it into. So I browse to my downloads folder and this is the folder called SQL Server. 
I'm just going to click OK. And you can see here on that select download location is now selected the folder I created. So it's going to download it into that. So once that's selected, I'm just going to click download for the download to begin. The download of SQL Server 2019 Developer Edition is now complete. So I'm just going to close this box here. It says, are you sure you want to exit? I'll say yes. I'm going to open up the folder that I downloaded the SQL Server 2019 into. So I'll double click to open it. You can see here it is a disk image file. So I'm just going to double click to open the content. So these are the content. Hello and welcome to this video. In this video, we are going to install SQL Server 2019 Developer Edition. I'm going to open up the folder that I downloaded the SQL Server 2019 into. So I'll double click to open it. You can see here it is a disk image file. So I'm just going to double click to open the content. So these are the content. So to begin the installation, I'm just going to double click on this setup file here to run it. And that should start the installation. This is the initial screen you get when you try to install SQL Server. And on the left here, it gives you the different steps that the installation is going to take. So the first step is basically the planning where you just check to make sure that you've got the right hardware and software. If you want to do that, you can just click on this link here to take you to the hardware and software requirements. And there are different documentation as well, security documentation. If you want to read through it, you can. Now there is an important tool here, which is called System Configuration Checker. If you run this tool, it will check to make sure that your system is ready to install SQL Server 2019. So I'm going to click to run this checker and that will quickly run through my system and tell me if my system is ready or not. You can see here it says the operation is completed. I have passed eight. So you run eight checks and I've passed it. If you want to see the details, just click show details and it will tell you everything it has checked and you can see here the status is passed. I'm just going to click OK to close this. So now I know my system is ready for the installation because I have passed all the hardware and software requirements. Next, I'm going to move on to the installation stage. So I'll click on installation. Inside the installation page, we have the option here to install new SQL Server, standalone installation, or add features to an existing installation. So if you already have SQL Server installed and you want to add features to the existing installation, you can still use this link. But I am installing a single instance of SQL Server. So I'm going to click on that and that will launch the installation wizard. So this is the installation wizard. The first thing it asks is for a product key. It has detected that I'm running a developer edition. So I don't need a product key. If you were not running developer, you will normally have to put in your product key there. So I'm going to accept and click next. And that will give me the next screen here. So I'm just going to check this box to accept the license agreement. You can see these are the various steps. I'm on step number two, license terms that I'm going to go through to complete the installation. So I'll click on next and it will do some basic checks. It will install some set of files. So I just wait for it to finish on this step of the installation here. I've had some checks here. It says I've passed three and failed zero. You can see here the one that I have a warning on. So it's just a warning about the firewall. This is not serious. It's not a show stopper. It will not stop the installation from progressing. If you want to see what it says, you can click on the warning thing here and it just tells you what that says. So I'm going to click next to progress 
to the next stage of the installation. The next step is you are provided with this feature selection so that you select the component you want to install for this instance. In this case, I only want to install the database engine services. So I'm going to check that. That is the only thing I'm going to check. If you look on the right here, it gives you the feature description, tells you what it is, what it does. You can also come back to add features once you've installed SQL Server. And then you have the instance. It tells you this is where it's going to install it in the root of C program files, Microsoft SQL Server. And it tells you this is a shared feature directory. If you, for example, want to install all the features, you can click on this button and that will select all the features. But before you do that, make sure you do have sufficient disk space. So with the database engine services checked, I'm going to click next to progress to the next step of the installation. The next step is to give your instance a name. So this is the instance configuration. The default name for the instance is called MS SQL Server. I'm going to change that. I'm going to give it my own name. I'm going to call it SQL Server 2019. Make sure if you decide to change the default name of the instance, the name you give, make sure there are no spaces. The name you give your instance is also used as the instance ID. So I've given my name instance SQL Server 2019. The instance ID is also going to change to reflect that. All right, you can see it has changed. So I'm going to click next to progress to the next step, which is server configuration. So it's doing the instance configuration now. And once that is done, we've moved on now to the server configuration. So I'm just going to accept all the default that is there and click on next to move to the next step. So I'm going to click next to progress to the next stage. We are now on the database engine configuration page where you have to set the method of authentication to the SQL Server. The default is Windows Authentication Mode, which means whatever way you log into your computer, that will be used also to connect to the server. I'm going to select Mix Mode, which is a mixture of the Windows Authentication and a SQL Server Mode. But you have to provide a password to accommodate the SQL Server Mode. Once you have entered the password and confirmed the password, you also need to add a user that has administrative rights. So I'm going to click on this button that says add current user. I'll click on that. You can see that has added the username I used to log on to this computer, which is administrator. So once that has been entered and we've entered the password for the SQL Server System Administrator account, which is called the SA account. Click on next. It then gives you a summary before it actually progresses with the installation. It tells you here ready to install. You can see here I've got two more steps. So feel free to read through the summary. If there's anything that's not right, you can change it before you progress. So I'm happy with everything. I'm going to click on install. It also tells you here the configuration file path. So I'm going to click install and that will begin the installation. You can see it says installation in progress. So I've gone through all the steps. I've got just one more step to complete. The installation is now complete. So you can see here status says succeeded and tells you all the features it has installed. So I'm just going to click on this close button here to exit the installation screen and also exit this screen. The next thing to do is to check for SQL Server in my programs menu. So I'm going to click on start and on the start here, there is should be a folder for Microsoft SQL Server. You can see here it says new, 
Microsoft SQL Server 2019. If I expand that, you can see here it tells me these are all the things it has installed. So these tools are quite useful. We've got the SQL Server 2019 Configuration Manager, SQL Server 2019 Error Usage, SQL Server 2019 Import Export, SQL Server 2019 Installation Center. So these are very useful tools that will come in handy if you want to perform configuration or import stuff and also add additional features to your installation of SQL Server. What is Azure? Azure is Microsoft's cloud computing platform. Azure has an expanding set of services to help you build solutions to meet your business goals. Azure supports infrastructure as a service, platform as a service, and software as a service. Azure supports virtual machines running in the cloud, website and database hosting, and advanced computing services like artificial intelligence and machine learning. Most of Azure services are pay as you go, so you only pay for the computing time that you use. If your business needs complete control over your computing environment, Azure allows you to host virtual machines in the cloud. You can create virtual machines from scratch. You can upload your own virtual hard drive, or you can choose from an array of templates that Azure provides. Azure also provides cloud-based storage, which allows you to store your applications or back up your data safely and securely. Azure App Services provides a scalable hosting platform where developers can create web-based applications using popular development frameworks. With Azure, you can easily deploy, operate and scale your apps in a fully managed environment. With Azure Functions, you can create event-driven serverless applications with no code required. Azure Container Instances and Azure Kubernetes Services allows you to deploy containerized applications with fully managed services. Azure offers a choice of fully managed relational and in-memory databases spanning from proprietary to open source engines. Microsoft Cosmos Database provides support for several NoSQL APIs. Azure Artificial Intelligence and Machine Learning Services empowers developers and data scientists with a wide range of productive experiences for building, for training, and for developing machine learning models faster. Azure Regional Data Centers allows you to distribute your applications globally so you can locate your data and apps where they are needed the most, thereby improving your application's performance for your customers. Azure Portal lets you create configure and control all your services and resources from a single easy to use web-based interface. Azure offers a wide range of cloud computing services such as infrastructure management, scalability, availability and security. These are all handled by Azure, saving you money and time. Hello and welcome to this video. In this video, I'll be showing you how to create a free Microsoft Azure account. To create a free Microsoft Azure account, you will already need to have an account on a Microsoft product, for example, Hotmail. If you haven't got one, you'll need to create one. Also, you need a credit or debit card for upgrade. So you will be requested to present your credit or debit card details. Microsoft does not actually charge you, but they just want the card on file just in case you need to upgrade. And if you extend the free trial of the products, here is the link to the Microsoft Azure website. 
this is the Microsoft Azure website. So if you look on the far right hand corner, there is a link here for free account. So if you click on that, it tells you by creating an account, you get free access for 12 months to some of the services. So if I scroll down here, you can see what the free account gives you. So you have 12 months of popular free services, $200 credit, and then um, there are some services that are free, but there are some services that has a cap on them. So once you exceed the free limit, you will be prompted to upgrade. Feel free to scroll down the page so you can see what the free account and also what services are available for the Azure account. So scroll through and then take a look. So once you are ready, there's an option here to start free. So just click on start free. You are presented with this Microsoft login account. So if you already have an account on a Microsoft product, this is where you enter the email address. If you don't have an account on a Microsoft product, there is a link here to create a new account. So I'm just going to enter my account details. So I've entered my account details here. I'm going to click next. Once you have signed in using your Microsoft account details, you can see your name will be displayed and then you have this form you have to complete to create the free as your account. So your region will be automatically detected here. Next, you need to complete the details of your profile form. If you look on the right here, it tells you what the career account entails. If you look here, it says no automatic charges. That means it will not charge you without letting you know. So after your credit is over on the service you are using, it will ask you if you want to continue as pay as you go. If you wish to do so, then the credit card that they have on file will be charged. They will not charge you without first asking you. The form also requires you to enter a phone number. So make sure you enter a valid number there. And then you have to check this I agree to the subscription. Make sure you check that. If you want to receive information or tips regarding as your offers, you can leave that checked, but I don't want that. So I'm going to uncheck it. Also, if you like Microsoft to share your information, you can check that box. I don't want that. So I'm going to leave that unchecked. And then here you have to select the method of verification either by phone or by card. So I'm going to click on this identification by phone and then I'll click on the next button. Next, I can choose the option to send me a text or to call me. Once you get your verification code, make sure you enter your verification code here and then click to verify code. After the verification by phone, you also have to do the identity verification by card. So it tells you here that will make a temporary authorization on the card, but you won't get charged unless you upgrade. So obviously just enter your card details in here and then you click on the sign up button. Once your card has been verified, your account becomes active and you are redirected to the Azure page and you may get this pop up here if you would like to participate. For now, I'm going to say no, and then it tells you you are ready to start with Azure. Now that you have an account on Azure to interact with any of the free products that Azure has, you have to do that through the Azure portal. So if you look here on the right here, there is the option for portal. That's where you need to go once you've logged in to interact with any of the Azure services. Hello and welcome to this video. In this video, I'll be showing you how to access Azure services. In order to access any of the Azure services, you have to log in to the Azure portal. 
the link to log into the portal is displayed on the screen. Before you can log into the Azure portal, you should already have an account. If you haven't, you can click on this link here to create a new account. I have already got an account on Azure. So I'm going to click on this portal option here. It has detected that I have already logged in before. So I'm going to click on my username here. I've entered my password. So I'm going to click sign in. Once you have signed in to Azure portal, you can access the Azure services. So you have different links here to create a resource, SQL database, and so on. If you want to see more services, just click on this link here, and that will give you more services that you can look through. If you want to return to the homepage, just click on the Microsoft Azure here on the bar, and that takes you back to the homepage where you can navigate the page and then go through the different services and then click on the link to the one that you are interested in. In this video, I showed you how to log into the Azure portal in order to access the Azure services that are of interest to you. So that's it for this video. Thank you for watching. Bye for now. Hello and welcome to this video. In this video, I'm going to create a new SQL database in Azure. Once you have logged into the Azure portal in the dashboard area, there should be a link for SQL databases. So this is SQL databases. So click to launch that. And inside the SQL databases option, there is a link here to create SQL database. So click on that. There are different steps to follow to create a new SQL database. So these are the steps. At the moment, we are on the basics. So in the basics area, there are options to complete. So we have the project details and under subscription, it will auto populate your subscription model. If you've got more than one, you can select it from the drop down. I'm using a free trial, so you can see it's auto-populated the free trial. And then here we have the resource group. So if you have a resource group already created, you can click on the drop down and select it. If not, you can create a new one. I'm going to create a new resource group. So I click on this link here to create new, and then I'm going to give the resource group a name. I've called my resource group. BLS resource groups. I'm going to click OK. And you can see here it has populated the resource group. The next option is the database details, this area here. So I have to provide a name for this new database I want to create. I have entered a name. I've called the database BLS database. The next option is the server options. So if you've already got an existing server, you could select it from the drop down menu here. If you haven't got one, there is a link to create one. So I'm going to create on this link that says create new, and that will give me a form here on the right. This is where I will enter the details for my new server. I've now entered the details for my new server. So these are the details. The details has to be unique. For example, the server name has to be unique and I've entered my server admin. This is what I'm going to use to log in to the server later. And I've entered the password, confirm the password. On the, this area here called location, there should be a default location set. If you want to change that, there is a drop down list. So from the drop down here, you can select your desired location. When you're done, there is an OK button here. Just click OK. I've completed the first step of the database creation. The next step is the networking. So I'll click on this option here for networking. There are three options here for the connectivity method. I'm going to select the middle one, which is public endpoint. And then we have the firewall rules. The first option I'm going to leave, which is allow Azure services and resources to access this server. I'm going to leave that set to no. The second option, add current IP address. I'm going to switch that to yes. We're ready to go to the next step of the database creation, which is security. So I'll click on this button here for security. Under security, we've got the enable Azure Defender for SQL. I'm going to leave the default, which is not 
now and click to progress to the next stage which is additional settings so i click on that on the additional settings tab in the data source section there is an option for use existing data so i'm going to select the option that says sample by selecting this option it creates a database called adventure works lt which is a sample database this basically gives you a free database with some tables that you can query the data and also experiment with the database if you wish to do so. The next step is tags. So I'm going to click on the option for tags and basically here it gives you a description of what tags are. I'm going to skip this step and move to the final stage, which is the review plus create so i'm going to click review plus create it then gives you an estimated cost per month for using this service in the cloud so there's an option to view pricing details you can click to view that and that basically gives you an estimated cost per month of using this service but i'm on the free trial so there should not be any cost Usually Microsoft will prompt you for an upgrade before it charges you. So I'm going to click on the button here to create and that should create. You can see it's initializing the deployment. We just give it a few minutes to create the database. As you can see, the deployment of the database is in progress. Once the database has been created, you should get a message to say the deployment has been successful and it tells you your deployment is complete so that's it for this video in this video i created an sql database in microsoft azure thanks for watching bye for now hello and welcome to this video in this video i'm going to query a database in azure once you've logged into the azure portal the next thing to do is to look for the database you want to query. So the database I want to query is an SQL database. So here in the dashboard area, I'm going to click SQL databases, and then it will give me a list of all the SQL databases that I have. You can see here, I've got one listed. Next, I'm going to click on my database link to open up the database window and in the window area here i'm going to look for the query editor that i'm going to use to query the database you can see here i've got the query editor so i'm going to click to open up the query editor to access the database you have to log in so here on the sql server authentication you put your details in and then click ok or you can log in as your Active Directory authentication, which is going to be the name you use to sign up to Azure. So once you've entered your credentials into the SQL Server, just click OK. So I've now logged into the SQL Server and I'm able to access the database. So if I expand here, we can see a list of tables that the database has and we can see it has some views as well and then there are some stored procedure so this is the query window this is where you write your query to query the database so i've already pre-staged the query i'm just going to paste that into this query window to query the database i've pasted in my query you can always expand the query window so i'm just going to expand that a bit so you can see the full query so the query is going to select the top 20 record and i've specified the columns and i've also specified some alias name the as here basically indicates that it's going to be an alias name the query is actually combining data from two tables and the first table we're giving an alias name or pc and we are joining both tables by using the product category id 
So both tables have a common column called product category ID. So we are joining the data based on this column ID called product category. So let's run the query by clicking on the run button and then we can see what it returns. You can see the result of the query for this database. When you execute a query, you can save the query. There's an option to save. You can also export the data of the query as different format, maybe as a CSV file. So I'm done with this query. I'm just going to minimize the query window and also close the query window by clicking on the X here and that will exit the query window. If I want to set up a new query, I can just click on this new query option and the query editor window will pop up and I can query more tables from the database. So that's it for this video. In this video, I queried a Microsoft Azure database. Thanks for watching. Bye for now. Hello and welcome to this video. In this video, I'll be showing you how to connect to SQL Server using Azure Data Studio. So I've done a quick search on Azure Data Studio. So I'm going to click on the link here and that will launch Azure Data Studio. You are going to need some information about your SQL Server. So you need to know the name. To find out the name of your SQL Server, go to Program Files and then look for Microsoft SQL Server. So this is a SQL Server folder. And you can see that the instance I have is called SQL Server 2019. So this is going to be the name of your SQL Server. If you already have connections to other databases or servers, they'll be listed here on the servers. You can see I have a connection here, which is to Azure SQL Server in the cloud. To create a new connection, click on this option here that says new connection. And then we have to provide some information for the connection. So the connection type is Microsoft SQL Server. You have to provide the details of your server. So it will be the name of your computer slash the server name. So I've added the name of my computer and my authentication is going to be Windows authentication. You can click on the drop down. There are also SQL login or as your Active Directory. You can also connect to a specific database. So if you want to just add the name of the database and you can connect to a specific server group. So I'm going to leave the defaults and just click connect and it will automatically connect using the Windows credentials that I've already used to log in. So I click connect. So I've successfully connected to my SQL Server. It displays the name of my SQL Server here, it displays the name here as well. And if I want to see the databases on that my SQL Server connection, I click on the drop down for databases and I can see all my databases from that SQL Server. So that's it for this video. In this video, I showed you how to connect to SQL Server using Azure Data Studio. Thank you for watching. Bye for now. Hello and welcome to this video. In this video, I'll be showing you how to create a new database on an SQL Server using Azure Data Studio. I have already connected to my Microsoft SQL Server from Azure Data Studio. So you can see here that the connection is active because we've got a green dot next to the connection name. So I'm going to open up the query editor. So I click on file, new query, and inside here is where I'm going to write the query to create a new database. So it knows that I am creating the database inside the SQL Server. To create a database, all you have to do is type in the command create space database and then you give the database a name. So I'm creating a database called Blue Lime. So I'm going to click on this run button and that will execute the command 
and you can see here it says it has executed the query and the command completed successfully. So I'm going to right click on the database, refresh. If I expand it, I should see the new database I just created, which is called BlueLime. So that's it for this video. In this video, I showed you how to create a new database on an SQL server using Azure Data Studio. Thank you for watching. Bye for now. Hello and welcome to this video. In this video, I'll be showing you how to create a new table in a database. I've already connected to SQL Server. I have added the SQL query that will be used to create a new table. On line number one is a command create table, which is used to create a table. And the name of the table is going to be called products. Before the product name, I have specified DBO. DBO basically means database owner. So the table is going to be owned by the database owner. Line number two to line five is where we specified the columns that the table is going to have. Line number two is going to have a column called product ID. And this column is going to have a data type of int. Int means integer. So the data I'm expecting to go into that column is going to be numerical data. Every table should have a primary key that can be used to identify each record in a table. So the primary key is going to be applied to the product ID column. This column is going to have a constraint of not null, which means that a value must be entered for that column. Line number three is another column called product name. The data type is going to be var char and is going to accept a maximum character length of 25. On line number four is another column called price and the type of data that's going to be expected is money and it's got null, which means you can leave the column blank. You don't have to enter a value. Line number five is the product description column. The data type is voucher and I've got max there, which means it can accept maximum number of characters. And I've specified it to be null, which means that you can also leave it blank. You don't have to enter any information for that column. Before you execute the query, make sure you select the right database. So I'm going to click on the drop down here and select the database I want to create the table in and is the database called blue lime. So I've got the database selected. I'm going to press the run button to execute the query. You can see it says command completed successfully. If I take a look at the database, you should see a new table called product. So this is a database called blue lime. I'm going to expand and look at the tables here. I should have only one table, which is called product. So this is the table I've just created. If I expand that, you can see all the columns. I've got four columns, product ID, product name, price, and then product description. In this video, I showed you how to create a new table in an SQL Server database using Azure Data Studio. Thank you for watching. Bye for now. Hello and welcome to this video. In this video, I'll be showing you how to insert data into a table. I have already connected to SQL Server using Azure Data Studio. So I'm going to add a new query. So I click on file and then new query. And inside the query editor, I'm going to add the SQL query that will be used to insert three records into a table. The first thing I need to do is select the database that contains the table I want to insert the records into. So I click on the drop down here and the database is called blue line. I have added the SQL query that will insert three records into 
the database table called products. So let me run through this query. Line number one, you insert records by typing in the word insert into. I'm inserting records into the table called products. Um, DBO basically means the table is owned by the database owner. After specifying the name of the table you want to insert the records into on line number one, in parentheses you specify the columns of the table. So the table has four columns, product ID, product name, price, and then product description. Line number three, you specify the values that are going to go into each of the columns as records. So I'm going to be inserting three records into the table. The records I'm going to be inserting are enclosed in parentheses. On line number five, the one there represents that that is going to be the first record and that will be the product ID. The clamp is going to be the product name. 1248 is going to be the price and then workbench clamp is going to be the product description. So line number six is the second record, line number seven is the third record. When you're done, just hit the run button and that will insert. You can see it has inserted records into the table. It says three rows affected, which means it has inserted three records into the table. In this video, I showed you how to insert some records into a database table using Azure Data Studio. Thank you for watching. Bye for now. Hello and welcome to this video. In this video, I'll be showing you how to query data from an SQL Server database using Azure Data Studio. I have already connected to SQL Server. So I'm going to open up a new query. So I click on file, new query. The first thing I need to do is select the database that contains the table I want to query. So I click on the drop down and the name of the database is called Blue Lime. I've added the query that will query the table. So on line number one here, you use the keyword select to select the table and this asterisk basically means that I want to query all the columns from this table called products. You can query specific columns but I want to return data from all the columns from this table called products. I know I have three records in that table so I want to see all the records. So this query when executed will return all the records from the table called products. So I'm going to run this query. I click on the run button and you can see it has returned the three records contained in the table called products. In this video, I showed you how to query a database table using Azure Data Studio. Thank you for watching. Bye for now. Hello and welcome to this video. In this video, I'll be showing you how to connect to your Azure SQL database server using Azure Data Studio. I've got the icon for Azure Data Studio on my desktop, so I'm going to double click to launch it. The first time you run Azure Data Studio, the welcome page should open like this. If you don't see the welcome page, you can activate it from the help menu here. Just click help and then click welcome and that should activate the welcome screen. To begin, I'm going to click on the link to set up a new connection. We need to enter some information for the connection. So the connection type here is going to be Microsoft SQL Server. So make sure that is set to SQL Server. And then the server is going to be the name of your Azure database server and then you enter the authentication which is for your Azure database server. Enter your username, enter your password. I've now entered the relevant information 
to connect to my Azure server. So I'm going to click on the connect button to connect. I have successfully connected to my Azure SQL database server. So you can see the name of my server here. So inside Data Studio, I can click here and you can see on the servers, I have my server here, which is the Azure database. So if I expand this database folder, I should be able to see my Azure database. Well, this is my Azure database server. If I expand that, I can take a look at the database objects. So if I expand the table folder, I should be able to see all my tables for my Azure database. So that's how you connect to your Azure SQL database server using Azure Data Studio. To disconnect from your Azure SQL database server inside Azure Data Studio, just right click on the name of the server and there should be a link to disconnect and that will disconnect the connection. So that's it for this video. In this video, I showed you how to connect to your Azure SQL database server using Azure Data Studio. Thanks for watching. Bye for now. Hello and welcome to this video. In this video, I'm going to create a new database in Azure SQL Server using Azure Data Studio and T-SQL. I have already connected to my Azure SQL Server from Azure Data Studio. So you can see this is my Azure server, SQL server. So if I expand the databases here, I currently have just the one database on my Azure SQL database server. So I'm going to create a new database using Transact SQL. A database server can have several databases. So to begin, I need to open a new query window. So I click on this, right click and select new query. And that opens up a query window. I've already prepared the SQL query I want to use. I'm going to paste that in and just explain what the query does. I've added the query that will create the new database. So I'm going to explain what the query does. On line one to line five, I am checking the database server to see if the database I'm trying to create called Blue Lime DB, if that database already exists. And the way it does that is by using the select statement on line two. So it's going to select the name from the system databases to check if there is any database called blue lime db so if i expand the databases on the left you can see here on the system databases i only have one system database which is called the master on line number four where i have the name of the database specified i've also got a prefix n what this prefix does it actually denotes that the subsequent string is in Unicode. The N basically stands for National Language Character Set. And that basically means that you are passing an N char, N voucher, or N text value. On line number six is the actual statement that creates the database. So when you're creating a database, the statement is create space database, and then you pass in the name of the database. So the name of the database I'm going to create is going to be blue lime DB. On line number seven, we have the keyword go. This basically tells SQL server to execute the preceding code as one batch. On line number nine, I've got this altered database statement. The altered database statement is used to change the characteristics of a database. When you're using the all database statement, you pass in the name of the database that you want to affect. And then here I've got set. I am setting a value 
of the query underscore store. By default, this value has to be on on Azure SQL databases for single database server. You cannot have that off. It has to be on. So what does the query store do? The query store basically is where data is stored in the user's database. The query store usually is configured with a size limit, usually a maximum storage size limit. If the data in the query store reaches the limit query, it will automatically change the state from read write to read only and stop collecting new data. To execute this query, I click on the run button here and in the message area, it will tell you how the query is progressing. So you can see here, it has started executing the query as line number one. So we'll give it a few minutes to complete the execution of the query. The query has completed successfully. You can see there are no errors in the messages area. So under databases here on the left, I'm going to right click on the database folder and select refresh. And after it has refreshed, you can see the new database I've created called blue lime DB is now shown in the database folder. So that's it for this video. In this video, I showed you how to create a new database using transact SQL and as your data studio. Thanks for watching. Bye for now. Hello and welcome to this video. In this video, I'm going to create a new table in an Azure database using Azure Data Studio and T-SQL. I have connected to my Azure Database SQL Server from my Azure Data Studio. You can see this is my connection to my Azure SQL Database Server. I'm going to create a new table in one of my databases, this database called Blue Lime DB. So to begin, I right click on the connection, select new query, and I wait for it to come up. And then here I need to select the database I want to create the table in. So I click on the drop down and that should populate my databases. So this is the database I want to create the new table in. I've already prepared the SQL query. I'm going to add that into this query editor and then execute the query to create the new table. I have added the query that will create the new table in the database. Line number one are basically comments. That's why the text is green. So when the query is executed, the comments are excluded from the execution. Comments are basically there to help describe some aspects of your query. So line number one is a comment, which is telling me I'm going to create a new table called customers in the schema called DBO. A schema is basically the organization and structure of a database. The DBO schema is the default schema for a newly created database. So the DBA schema is actually owned by the DBA user account. On line number three is a comment. Basically, I am specifying that I'm going to drop the table if it already exists. So the actual query starts from line number six to line number 17. On line number six, I'm using if object underscore ID to check if the object, which is the table I'm trying to create, I'm checking if it already exists. So within the object ID, the object I'm trying to check is called customers, which is going to be the name of the table I'm going to create and it's going to be created in the schema called DBO. So I'm checking if it already exists. The U on line number six basically stands for the table, which means a user 
defined table. And then we have is not null. The is not null is a condition that is used in T-SQL to test for a non-null value. So it returns true if a non-null value is found, otherwise it returns false. On line number seven is the drop table statement. So basically we are checking if that table called customers already exists, we're going to use the statement on line number seven to drop the table. When you drop a table, it basically means you are deleting a table from the database. On line number eight, we have the go keyword. The go keyword basically tells SQL Server to execute the preceding code as one batch. So the block of query from line number six to line number eight, what this block does, it checks if the table I'm trying to create already exists. If it does, it will drop the table. And then the block of code from line number 10 to 17 is what is going to create the new table with specified columns or fields. To create a table on line number 10, you use the statement create table. You specify the schema, which is DBO. And then the name of the table is called customers. And then you have the opening parentheses and the closing parentheses. This is where you enclose all the columns the table is going to have. The first column in the table, which is on line number 12, is going to be the customer ID column. This column is going to have a data type of int. Int basically means integer, which means numbers only. And then we have a constraint of not null. Not null basically means that this column cannot be empty. That means a value must be entered in this column. It does not accept null or empty value. When something is null, that means there's no value or no data for that particular column. Also, the customer ID column is going to be the primary key. The primary key constraint basically uniquely identifies each record in a table. Every table must have a primary key which must contain unique values and cannot contain null values. On line number 13 is the second column for this table. It's going to be called name. The data type is going to be nvarchar. nvarchar data type basically stores character data in a variable length field. So I've given it a value of 50. This is the maximum character length that this column is going to accept. I've also given it a constraint of not null. Line number 14 is the third column for this table called location. Again, this is going to have the data type of nvarchar and a maximum character length of 50. It's going to have a constraint of not null. The final column for this table on line number 15 is the email column. Again, this will have a data type of n voucher, maximum parameter length of 50, and a constraint of not null. And on line number 17, we have the go keyword, which is going to be used to send this batch of query to the SQL server. To execute the query, I click on the play button here. As you can see in the messages area, the query has completed successfully without any error, everything executed. So if I expand the databases area here, expand my database called Bluelime DB, and if I expand the tables, you see I've got one table, which is the customers table, which is the table I just created. If I expand that, we can see the columns in the table. 
So these are all the columns. Customer ID, which is a primary key. It's an integer data type, not null constraint. And these are the other columns for the table. So that's it for this video. In this video, I created a new database table. Hello and welcome to this video. In this video, I'm going to insert some data into a table in an Azure database using Azure Data Studio and T-SQL. I have connected to my Azure SQL Server database from my Azure Data Studio. So this is the database server I've connected to. I'm going to insert some data in a table in this database called Blue Lime DB. So I'm going to expand that, expand tables. And then this is the table I'm going to insert data into. To begin, I'm going to open up a new query window. So I click on the link for my server, right click, select new query, and I'm going to select the database I want to insert data into. And the database is called Blue Lime DB. And then I'm going to add the query. I've already prepared the query. I'm going to add the query here. I've added the query to insert some data into the table. So line number one here is just a comment to say what I'm going to do. And then line number three, we have the insert into statement. This is the statement you use to insert data into a table. The name of the table is called customers and the table belongs to a schema called DBO. Line number four here consists of all the columns or fields in the table that I'm going to insert data into. Line number five is the values that are going to go into each of the columns. I'm going to insert four records into the table. So line six to nine are the records that will go into each of the columns for the table. For example, on line number six, the first value here will go to customer ID. And then we have the value for name that goes to the name Rick. And then we have the column for location that goes to United Kingdom. And then we have the column for email and that goes to Rick at Blue Lime Learning Solutions. So the format is the same for all the other records I'm going to insert. To run the query, I click on the run button here and that will execute the query. As you can see here, the query executed successfully, four rows affected, which means it has inserted four records into that table. I'm going to quickly query the database so that I can see the records I just inserted. So I'm going to create a new query. So I right click and select new query. I'm going to just add a query here. And basically what this query is going to do is going to query the database. So I click on the drop down and select my database. To execute the query, I click on the run button and if everything goes okay, you can see here now I have all the records that I just inserted into that table. So that's it for this video. In this video, I inserted some data into an Azure database server. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.